All right, everybody, Chase March here, and we got a special guest on the program, friend of the program indeed. You've heard his voice many a times, whether I've had him on the interview tip or just playing his music because it's awesome. Danny O, how's it going, man? What's good, brother? I'm good, man. Keeping busy. How are you? Oh, pretty good. It was interesting because we were having a little bit of an exchange on Facebook recently, yeah. and I thought it would be cool to come along and talk about it because... There's a clip of you at a show. Yeah. This is several years old, and I've seen it come up again and again, mm -hmm. talking about what is kind of an epidemic in <laughs> live hip hop shows. Mm -hmm. I know because I DJ a bunch of them. Yeah. And I go to a bunch of them. The problem is some people think it's cool or they like to rap over vocals. And you had a really good take on it at this live show. And I've seen this clip so many times. I think I might have been at this show, or I might have been at a show where, I can't remember if you remember where this show was, but you were addressing it very nicely and succinctly in this clip. Yeah, respect, bro. Man, I should know the name of the club because I ended up shooting a video outside of it not too long after that. If it doesn't come to me, I know that it was a, there was a showcase back in 2019 that was invited to, to be basically a guest judge of a showcase. And to be honest with you, man, when you're judging a showcase, obviously you got to pay attention to every act. And there were a lot using vocals in their performance. I only kind of first recall coming into contact with this kind of thing about 10 years ago. I was at South by Southwest in, in Tex, Austin, Texas in 2013. And it was interesting because, you know, you get to know artists down there. And one artist decided to give me some feedback about my show. And he was like, yo, I really like the way you interact with the audience and all of that but maybe you do a little too much of that and just need to get to your songs quicker. And I was like, you know, I appreciate the feedback. You know, I, you know, I can consider that, whatever. I like to generate some communication between me and my audience, but I felt the need to ask him a question because since he brought up my performance, I was like, yo, so I have some, a question for you. I noticed that when you were performing, you had your main vocals in the track. So you were rapping on top of your own recorded raps. Why did you do that? Because I don't remember having seen it before, I think. Anyways, his answer I'll never forget was, man, just sometimes I'd be forgetting my lyrics. You know, I got a lot on my plate. I got wife and kids at home, blah, blah, blah. And I was like, man, I, I don't think anybody in the audience cares about your personal life. They came to see a live show just saying, man, it would be nice to hear you live. It's harder to hear your live voice when I'm hearing recorded vocals. And then, like, like you said, it became an, it's, it's, I think that's a good word, it became an epidemic. It was like a thing that this newer generation seems to think is, is a okay. Let me just play the track. It's not even a performance track. It's the actual track, the master with the loud, with the vocals, the main vocals in front and the performing over it. Yep. And so, yeah, man, I heard enough of it at this particular showcase. It's funny how the videos had a little bit of a viral go at it recently because, yeah, it's about five years old now and yeah I stand by those words my advice to the artist was let me hear you live you know it doesn't sound good I've never thought it sounded good there's a thousand reasons man one of them is that recorded vocal and live vocal are always going to have a different sort of tone to it right generally when you're performing live you have a little bit of extra energy and your your voice tone is a little generally higher and filled with more energy so you're hearing two different tones of rap usually right on top of that it's become, as the artist in Texas told me, just a very lazy way to prepare for a show. If you don't remember your own lyrics, rehearse. Prepare your song, because it's your song. And a lot of your audiences won't know that you've made a mistake or you forgot a lyric if you perform it differently than what's on your record. So there's just tons of reasons. Uh, I gave a few that night. And like I said, I stand by that because I think it's whack. I've never done it. I don't, I, I don't plan on ever doing it. And yeah, I hope that uh, people will sort of heed the advice because I think it's it's ruining, you know, live shows. Yeah, and your take on it was awesome too because I sometimes sound overly harsh and critical. <laughs> <laughs> and you were just like, you were like very friendly saying, yo, you had a great show. <laughs> you had a great show. Yours, I noticed you were rapping on vocals. Like you were saying it conversationally and not like angry old man, like, you know, people that have been in the game as long as you have could be like you know so the fact that you were down to earth and saying that and then you also had a 
you know, because this post was going around, and I saw mm-hmm. another post where you were like, I just want to clarify my stance on this, and you wrote mm-hmm. a really nice piece about why you think we shouldn't be rapping on vocals and why MCs should be just having a performance track with the beat, not like the actual track that they're rapping over. And, and you make so many good points and you say mm-hmm. it in a way that's not, it shouldn't be offensive, but you were saying in that post too, it like, it was hilarious just to see the comments and, and yeah. where people stood on this. Yeah. I think a lot of people take things personally because they have to defend themselves against what they think is an attack. I appreciate you in recognizing that I wasn't trying to attack anybody. You know, I was offering an opinion based on lots of experience. And also, I think it pays to be respectful, right? Like, I don't go, I'm I'm not that dude. I don't go around disrespecting people. And if you perform over your vocals, that's not a reason for me to be disrespectful. It's just a reason for me to, you know, offer some advice, like I said, from someone who has a lot of experience. And I've heard different reasons, you know, I explained what I heard, you know, about 10 years ago, different people will say different things. Some people think it, think it adds to the performance. Some people feel like um, it, it's, oh, sound system was one of the reasons that people said it was a problem, like bad sound systems. If the mic isn't clear, then they want, you know, want you to hear the vocals anyways. I mean, I understand some of the reasoning. I still don't think it adds up though. And you're right. I wasn't trying to be, you know, disrespectful to anybody, but try and just explain the art of live performance. I've been in the game for a minute, so I'm a long time believer that your live show or rocking the mic, that's essentially what an MC is, right? I grew up on Rakim's definition, which was to me, MC means move the crowd. So when you're on stage with a mic in your hand, your ability to connect with your audience is what a real master of ceremonies does. And in a hip hop context, being able to rock the mic is being able to do so, so that you are connecting with your audience and they're vibing with you. They're throwing their hands up, they're yelling, oh, they're doing whatever is asked of them because the MC's there to rock the show. When you're just performing over your track, it doesn't give you room to play with. It doesn't allow you to speak to your audience in a way that you might under a normal circumstance of just the way you communicate with people because everything you're performing has been recorded already. Right. And as I said in that clip, I go, listen, your record might sound dope, but I'll play your record to listen to your record. When I watch you live, I want to hear you live and it gives you some freedom, some flexibility. When I perform live, I like shouting people out, maybe the city that I'm performing in or maybe I'm going to change what I'm saying. You know, a great example that I did not put on social media that just came to mind is like 30 years ago. Tribe Called Quest was touring, you know, off of their Midnight Marauders album. I've seen them perform a few times. God bless and rest in peace. Fife, Fife has this lyric. I think the song is Oh My God, where he goes, Come in with more hits than the Braves and the Yankees. You know that bar? Yeah, yeah. And because he was in Toronto, I'll never forget it. He goes, Come in with more hits than the Jays and the Yankees. And everyone lost their mind because, oh, he's shouting out our team. That's awesome. Yeah, it was a very simple, simple change to the lyrics. But he made it make sense for his audience, which was a Toronto audience. And how do you do that when the vocals are playing, right? So it's just one tiny uh, example, and there's many, many others of, you know, performing live, there's something to be said about you rocking the mic as an MC, of you be having the ability to do something live that only that audience gets to see in that moment, as opposed to what you've already recorded and maybe would do every single time you're on stage. So yeah, man, there's just way too many reasons to know your lyrics and perform your lyrics live, uh, no matter where you're at. I'm a performing artist and I have had times where I have forgotten my lyrics. I'm also a freestyler. So like I freestyle my way out of it. Okay. So I know there's a lot of rappers that can't do that. So I don't expect everyone to freestyle, but that is also an option there. It's a fallback, you know, if you forget your lyric, if you know the instrumental well enough or you just know timing, you're going to kind of know where the phrase to the chorus comes back in. So just kick some rhymes off the top of your head. That's what I do. 100%. Freestyle is something that any true MC has in his or her arsenal. I teach this. As I think you know, I do hip hop songwriting workshops. I've been doing that since 06. And one of the things that I teach and the way I even teach songwriting is I start with freestyle. And as I often say, everything's a freestyle before you've written it down. You have to have come up with it at some point. So if you have the ability to freestyle, which is just think on the spot for everyone who keeps forgetting what a real freestyle is, then absolutely you can rhyme your way out of it. Bro, let me tell you one time I did a showcase, I'll never forget it, man, where 
I was performing a song. There was free drinks at this event, I think, and I was just drinking. And I had a few before the show. This is why to this day, anyone who knows me knows I don't drink before performing. And this wow. is why, because bro, I was, I forgot the whole song, but I knew the song well enough to freestyle and get to the choruses when I needed to. So that is part of rehearsing is one, knowing your song well enough, knowing your beat well enough, well enough, knowing the drops and where the hook comes in and when it comes out, et cetera, bar counting, understanding your song well enough that, like you said, if you forget your lyrics, if you mess up one line, whatever, freestyle your way out of it. Again, I think a lot of what we're talking about right now is the difference between real MCs and rappers who ain't real MCs. And that's one of them. Like I said, it's rocking the crowd, right? Moving the crowd. But definitely freestyle is like a, a tool in the belt, man. I once likened it to a plumber who can fix sinks but can't do a thing with toilets. It's like you want someone who has all of the expertise that should come with the job. And if you consider yourself an MC, but you can't freestyle and you don't remember your lyric, you're not an MC. And this ain't me trying to diss, this is me spitting facts because hip hop is what it is and you can't change the definition because you decided to rap with your life. <laughs> you know, yeah. like, bro, bro, figure it out, man. We've been doing this for a long time and because you're doing it worse than us doesn't give you an excuse to get mad when we call you on it. That's being a little less nice than I was in the video <laughs> and on social media. Yeah. The interesting thing is, like, I didn't give you any talking notes on this interview. None. I didn't write any questions myself. We're just having a conversation. And if mm -hmm. people that don't know how to freestyle think of it that way, like when you have a conversation, do you write down what you're going to say next? Exactly. Are you even yeah. thinking about what you're going to say next? Like, this is all off the top. I can tell you're an educator because I, I do that in my workshops where I'll, I'll literally say, listen, we're having a conversation right now and no one wrote any of this down. So technically we freestyle every day, but anybody who knows how to rap or has an understanding of music has to understand, you know, syncopation and time signature and understanding there's a rhythm. And of course there's the rhyming component. And if you understand how to rhyme and you can maintain a rhythm, you can freestyle rap. And those are the two main things to change talking into rapping. And that becomes part of like day one of my hip hop workshop. So respectfully, people who consider themselves artists, especially if they want to be professional artists, but haven't figured out that the simple basics of rhyme and rhythm, honestly, go back to the drawing board, like keep studying, practice. And again, I don't mean that as a diss. I mean, for real, this is a craft. Students come into my workshops and often want to hit the studio. And I'm like, you're not studio ready. Like, that's why you're going to work with me for the next few weeks so that we can get you studio ready. And when I teach a workshop, especially with the artists who, who, who take it with a professional point of view and looking for a future in this business, I teach them exactly what it is I do. That's why I still, I'm still working in this industry and I continually earn an income as Danio between teaching, writing, recording, performing, acting. It's all part of a craft that I studied and work at. I don't take for granted. So I think that's something that artists need to keep in mind. Like, don't take for granted because you know you recorded a song that you can perform it. That's a whole other that section of understanding and learning is how to perform. Everything from how you hold the mic how you project your voice into it, your, your cadence, how, your breath control, how you communicate with your audience, eye contact, all of it is part of it. And I've been doing it forever, so, and I'm still doing it, so <laughs> hopefully my words resonate with some people who want to take their craft seriously. I hope so. I mean, I got you on the program tonight just to talk about this. We're talking to Danny O right now. And if you don't know this man, you have not been paying attention because I know in a new track we're going to get to shortly, you say uh, something like, uh, most of the world ignores me. And mm -hmm, I was like, man, mm -hmm. <laughs> I, I certainly hope not because you are dope. You're saying great things. You're a good guy. You're an educator <laughs> too. And it's just kind of cool. But before we get yeah. to more Dan Yo stuff, I, I want to stay on this topic just a little bit longer. Sure. Because as a DJ, as a hip hop DJ, like I got this mix show, interview show here, but I also do live performances. Right. And I'm backing up these people that are rapping over their vocals. Yeah. And to me, it's like nails on a chalkboard. Yeah, so I had one solution. And I don't know if this is going to offend people. But I was thinking of from now on, whenever I'm doing a hip hop show, 
insisting I get everybody's beats up front emailed mm-hmm. to me. And if they have vocals on them, send it back. Say, I am not spinning any of this. Yeah. You, you know, <laughs> it, it's an interesting take. And I actually thought about that when you mentioned it earlier, because as a DJ, I can only imagine how many, you know, performance tracks, beats or whatever you get for these live shows. And yeah, I mean, in a way, part of it is taking a stand for the culture. But I think another part of it, which is why people shouldn't get so offended, is we're actually offering free advice. We're offering help, I think, I look at it this way, help for artists to grow their careers. Because if you use it as a crutch and you always fall back on the recorded vocal, you're never going to step up. Let's take that same analogy where people complain about sound systems. Well, what about an instance where the sound system for whatever reason uh, is on the fritz and the music drops out, but your microphone is still live. What do you do then? I can tell you as a student of the game, I remember my first ever hip hop concert. I'll never forget it. It was 1990. I was 13 years old and special ed performed at the concert hall in Toronto. My dad, God bless him, dropped me and my bridge and Jatro off and picked us up. Okay, we were we were grade eight, man, and we had to go see Special Ed live. To this day, I've, I've memorized so many of his lyrics, including "I Got It Made," which was his big record. Probably, I think his first big record. It's an awesome record. Awesome record, right? Yeah. At the end of the show, man, I'll never forget the music shut off. I don't know what happened, but his mics were live. This is how dope Toronto was in the early '90s. Everybody in the crowd started clapping their hands and going "bam bam." Ba-da, no way. Ba-da. Yeah. So they recreated the beat and special ed rapped over us clapping and doing that beat. So it was really dope. And I remember that I'll never, like I said, it was my first show and I'll never forget it because that was in essence, one of my first in-person understandings of how to rock the mic because the show did not stop. He didn't make an excuse and say, you know, sorry, the music's not playing. As an MC, he kept going. I mean, the crowd was dope and doing what they did, but I grew up in an era where I couldn't do a show without someone in the crowd screaming, freestyle, right? Yeah. And what do you do? I grew up in an era where that's what you did. You freestyle, you gave the audience what they wanted and you showed your skills. We were about skills. We came up saying, you know, my skills and demonstrating them, it means something. It means a lot to me, means a lot to the culture, means a lot to the audience who's come here. You know, I, I was a battle MC. I entered talent shows and contests and always was striving to be the best. So imagine now if we just allow this era of, sure, send me your song and I'm gonna play your, your song with your vocals in it and allow you to perform over it. What happens? I don't know if people still yell freestyle, these days, but what happens when, you know, an artist is asked to do something, you know, off the cuff or whatever, or the song stops. I've played shows where, the, again, song stops. You don't know something's wrong with the, the system. So, you know, if you pride yourself on being an artist, especially if you're an MC, have those tools in your belt, be able to freestyle, be able to perform your song over, I don't know, hand claps, a beatbox, acapella. You know, how many times have you been to a show where someone rocks an acapella and you're like, oh, that was cool. I could really hear their words and I respect the way they dropped it. They can even take, you know, more time because they're not rhyming over a beat. So you just take all of that out of your show when you insist that you have to perform over your lyrics. So what I believe you're doing, if you were to implement that rule is, you're asking people to step their game up and that's good for them. I believe that's good for their career and their ability to grow as an artist. So people who get offended, I think are getting mad at the wrong people. The people giving you advice and helping you to build your craft are not the people you should be mad at. Maybe it's the yes men who think that it's cool for you to keep doing that because this is not how the culture you know, started. It's not how the art form was meant, sure. You could bring up a whole heap of artists, including the big names who have lip synced, but we're not lip syncing here. You haven't been asked to lip sync and it wasn't a lip syncing showcase, (laughs) you know? So what else can I say, man? Even non-professionals who go out to karaoke are performing live. (laughs) And that's the thing. I mean, what's next, right? Are you going to go up there with your lyrics, you know, like, I, I, you know, someone bring up uh, their phone or, you know, what used to be, you know, rhyme book or something and read like you would. There are certain expectations you have of live performers. You've memorized your lyrics, so no, you're not reading them. 
And yeah, you can perform them without a backing track. Now, again, if you have background vocals, ad libs or choruses, okay, cool. We're talking about main vocals here and the entire song being filled with them so that you perform everything that you've already recorded on top of the recording. That's got to change. And like I said, I'm trying to just list all these positive reasons for your own career why you should agree to it wise words from danny o right there yeah i think maybe i will move forward with this i gotta get everyone set ahead of time and, yeah man and and like you said it is a teachable moment and hopefully we are doing something here to try to get rid of this epidemic that's been happening because another thing i've been doing is i've been pretty busy lately so when i have a live hip-hop show that i'm rocking at a club I've been recording it yeah. because I like to be the old school type of DJ. Like when you get there for an hour before the show starts, I'm spinning. Right. So I'm spinning for an hour. I'm spinning dope stuff. I'm like, why don't I just air this on the radio too? Mm -hmm. So I've been recording all the sets I've been doing. And then I've recorded some of the ones where they've been rapping over vocals and it sounds so bad I can't air it. Right. But I've aired little clips of it just to show people what it sounds like. Right. Hopefully people can check back at some of those chasemarch.com. You can dip into the archives and hear some of those examples. Because I bet if some people hear themselves, it's different hearing it on the radio, I think, than opposed to when your buddy's just videotaping it on Instagram or something. Right. You can really hear the difference when it's like, I've recorded right out of the board, right out of the mixing board at the venue, you know? Yeah, for sure. I mean, a lot of live records, you know, live recordings, obviously recordings of live concerts, you know, are done in that way. And I can't imagine listening to a record that is a live recording if an artist performed their vocals over recorded vocals. Like, it's a mess. It's an audio mess. And that was one of the things I mentioned. I think it was the first thing I mentioned in that clip that went, you know, sort of viral was that it just doesn't sound dope. I'm not sure what you're hearing but it doesn't sound good. <laughs> it just doesn't. Yeah, as a DJ, if I try to play two records at the same time, right, you can hear it. So I don't know if anyone's been able to hear that. It's kind of this washy effect kind of thing. Yeah. It doesn't sound dope. So rappers, stop doing it. <laughs> and it's amazing because I knew we were probably going to be able to talk about this for a long time. Mm -hmm. But we should maybe change gears a little bit here <laughs> because we're talking to Danny O right now. Danny O is like, just a consistent artist that's been dropping it since the 90s like mm -hmm. this dude has got albums and tracks and you just shared with me a track that nobody's heard yet so we got a world premiere we got to play this right yes sir it's my brand new single cleanse my soul i gotta say it's a bucket list experience for me because i get to finally do a collabo with one of my favorite mcs ever master ace joins me on this record and super huge shout to my my girl uh, Century, who's the queen of soul from Toronto, as far as I'm concerned. So this is an amazing collabo with an important message about self hate and trying to escape that, and trying to get out of that. Something that really plagues the Black community, and with it being Black History Month, I thought it was an appropriate time to put this record out. All right, this is "Cleanse My Soul" by Danny O. You're listening to Word Is Bond Rap Radio, ninety four point nine FM, Radio Western. Oh yeah, cleanse my soul right there. Danny O is on that track with another legend in hip hop. And it's amazing that we can compare these two MCs because mm. Master Ace has been rapping since the 80s. Yeah. Danny O's been at least doing it since the 90s. And they're both amazing at their craft. And I love your catalogs, both of you. And like you said, dream come true. Like working with Master Ace, he's one of the best. So yes. congrats, man. And that Thank sounds, you. that track that we just dropped is dope. Thank you, man. Really appreciate it. Yeah, it definitely is a big deal for me. I became a super huge fan, bro, in 1988 as an 11-year-old watching. Um, it wasn't even Rap City yet. It was Soul in the City. I remember it. The song was Symphony by Marley Marlon. It had Master Ace, Craig G, Cool G Rap, Big Daddy Kane. I mean, that's like top of the line, man. The Juice Crew at the time. And, and, and Kane and G Rap are like my two favorites ever. So I've always been a fan. We bumped into each other a bunch of times over the years. But this was my first time, obviously, doing a track with him. And shouts to my bro Wordsworth, who was on my last album and put me in touch with Ace. And we made this happen. So 
big, big experience for me that I'm happy about. And thanks for premiering it. To Cleanse My Soul streams everywhere, no matter the music platform of your choice. February 9th is the day that you can stream it. That is so cool. Thanks for the exclusive and thanks for this conversation because I think this doesn't get talked about often enough. Sometimes it, like I talk about it with my DJ friends, but being able to air this to hopefully MCs that are listening, anyone on the come up and just get a different perspective on it. If this is something that you do rapping over vocals, maybe there's a better way. And it's always nice just to be able to kick it with people that I know and have a nice conversation and broadcast that out there to the world because this is real hip hop music and talk. That's what we do on Word is Bond. Yes, sir. I appreciate you, bro. Thanks a lot for having me, man. And and like I said, man, to cap things off, I really do hope people take the conversation for what it's worth. Again, I do think it's a teachable moment. You know, we've been in the game a minute and been doing this to know what we're talking about. And, you know, as I said on social media, as a follow-up to that video, look, there are ways around it. Again, rehearse. This is your song. This is your craft. No one can perform it better than you. Have confidence in yourself that you can do it without your vocals. And if you really need help, uh, get a hype man. I, I Listen, I perform with hype man, members of Monolith or my boys, whatever. You know, we've, we've rocked shows together like crazy. So it's much better to have someone on stage with you helping out with the lyrics, you know, taking breaths here and there. Obviously, we all need to do that. So there are ways around it. And uh, hopefully, you know, you can take these suggestions and just like grow as an artist. True indeed. Look this man up if you're not familiar with his catalog, Danny O. It's like Dan hyphen E dot O. So you'll be able to find no him two anywhere, hyphens, right? two hy Dan hyphen E hyphen O. It's funny because oh, I forgot the second hyphen. Yeah. I know the second hyphen's there. I, just, I misspoke. Listen, I definitely know how to spell your name. So sorry. <laughs> no, it's all good. I know you do. Listen, it's my fault, bro. I came up with the name. It's, it's just my name and my middle initial and last letter of my last name. But I decided to put hyphens in it and bro for decades people have been spelling it wrong so yeah it's dan dash e dash o no need to capitalize the e and the o wherever you punch that in youtube spotify apple music you'll find me so uh if you spell it right you'll, you'll hear it right awesome well thanks for your time man much respect have a good night happy black history month and thanks for this track because it is dope big respect i appreciate it man much much more on the way awesome we'll get you back on when you got more tracks and we can talk about them too sounds good man thank you bro all right have a good night you too peace Thanks for listening to Word is Bond Rap Radio. Please visit chasemarch.com to stream or download the podcast.